What's up everybody, this is Scott. Welcome back to another video. I finally got my hands on a Google Smart Display. It's actually called a Smart Display by Lenovo that has the Google Home or the Google Assistant in it, which is basically a Google Home with a screen. So this is direct shots fired at the Amazon Echo Show, which I thought was a little bit of a gimmick in the past because the assistants just use their voice to give you the answer that you're looking for. But finally, Google has gotten into this game where they have injected the assistant into something like that. So is it really worth it? So before I tell you whether or not I'm gonna stick with it, and you could probably tell right here that I have my Google Home Max back. So that should tell you a little bit as to what I think is it worth it or not. But I wanna tell you about it, some of the coolest features that it has, where I think it probably belongs, some of the sound quality, because I've heard some reports that the sound quality is bad, price, that type of thing. You really know at this point what the reviews do. So Lenovo is the first one to come out with this, but LG and Sony will have some coming out later. What you see right now is the Lenovo Smart Display. This is a 10 inch model. They do have an eight inch model as well. And at first glance, this thing is absolutely stunning. It is beautiful. The screen is super thin, it has a little, dongle thingy that you can cover the camera lens, which I thought was a really cool feature. It also has this really cool way that it can stand in horizontal mode and vertical mode. Honestly, vertical mode, right now the only app that can support that is Duo, and it's just not worth it in my opinion. So keep it horizontal, because that makes the most sense. Again, that thin display and hides the components really, really well. It's just very aesthetically pleasing. Mine had that bamboo back on the bottom, bamboo back on the bottom. Mine had that bamboo back on the back, a little a little redundant there, but the bamboo was on the back and it just looked really cool. So for those that have a Google Home, you know how ridiculously easy it is to set this thing up and this is no different. It is ridiculously easy to set up. You plug it in, you go into your Google Home app and basically set it up like you would just a regular Google Home or a Google Home Mini or a Google Home Max. Basically, you get the general gist of it. It's really super simple to do. So I had heard that the sound quality wasn't that good from some of the early reviews that I saw. When I finally got my hands on it, I wanted to know if it was truly that bad. Actually, it wasn't bad at all. I thought it was pretty easy overall. The sound quality was like a little bit better than a regular Google Home, definitely better than a Google Home Mini, but not even close to a Google Home Max. So if you're looking to try to get like exquisite, off the wall, really, really good sound, you're, you're gonna wanna go with that guy right there, the Google Home Max because you're just not gonna get that out of this particular display. But again, that's not what it's for. It has a display, so yeah. I didn't hate it, I didn't really love it, because I have, again, that Google Home Max over there, and I absolutely love the sound that that thing pushes out. So all in all, I thought it was really, really pretty good. Some of the basic features that you see when you're moving around the screen, you, the basic functionality goes swipe left to go back, swipe from the bottom, and you can mess around with the volume, you can mess around with some of the brightness of the screen. Swiping from the right, you can see some additional cards that you may have available, depending on what you have linked to your Google account. Uh, navigation's really easy. You just basically use the up, up, down, left, right. I mean, there's not much more to say other than using your voice, which is kind of the point of the assistant. Other reviewers have touched on this, and by far the very coolest feature out of the Lenovo Smart Display is the ability for it to help you cook. It is so, so cool. I absolutely love this particular part. I am gonna show you what I thought was awesome about it and you can listen here. And if any of you want to send me what I'm about to ask for with the Google Assistant, I would be fine with that because I love cheesecake. Show me a cheesecake recipe. Sure, here are some recipes. Before we start, heat oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Prepare ingredients. There are 17 ingredients. You can ask for the next ingredient or skip to the instructions. Skip to instructions. There's 18 steps. I'll read them one by one. When you're ready to hear more, you can say next step. First step, in small bowl, mix crust ingredients, press in bottom of ungreased 10 inch springform pan. Next step. Second step, bake 10 minutes. Set timer for 10 minutes. Sure, 10 minutes, starting now. So the ability to ask Google for a recipe 
and it give you step-by-step -step instructions as well as the ingredients that you need and you can use your voice while moving around the kitchen is by far the coolest feature. If I had a device like this in my home, it would most definitely be in the kitchen, hands down, bar none, because it just makes the most sense to be there. You can never go wrong with a really good cheesecake. And evidently Google agrees with me because she was right there with me, helping me make it along the way. Full disclosure, I didn't make it. I went to the store and I bought one and then I ended up housing that whole thing. So sorry, not sorry. So another cool feature out of that is my kiddo loves Harry Potter. So she can come downstairs and say, hey, the keyword right there. She wants to watch a particular Harry Potter and she could stand, well, it used to be right there. She could stand right there and watch it while I'm down here doing stuff for the studio or whatever that might be. Again, you can watch it right there on the device itself. Although I thought that was a little bizarre because you could just cast it to the television. That's where this device seems to get a little weird for me. So every one of you know that I love my Google Home Maxes. I have two, I'm trying to get a third one over there underneath Voltron. But the point is, is I absolutely love the sound that the Google Home Maxes make. So is this particular device something that I wanna spend $250 on because it is 250 bucks, rather than save that money and maybe get another 150 bucks and go get another Google Home Max that I could put right over there. I don't know. I'm not necessarily comfortable putting something like this in the bathroom or the bedroom. The bathroom, because I don't actually know if it's waterproof. My guess is it's probably not. If you take a hot shower, then I don't know what would happen to the display. So I didn't want to do that. In the bedroom, it just seemed like a total overkill for what I absolutely needed. When I'm waking up in the morning and I want to check traffic or the news or whatever, I don't necessarily need a display. I need something talking to me because I'm already in a hurry. So the display would just distract my eyes. Again, let's not forget, this has the exact same functionality as a regular Google Home. It just has a display on it. So the biggest differentiator is if you don't have one in your kitchen, it is a no brainer for me. If you are a huge cook or a baker or anything like that, this thing can help you give you exactly the ingredients that you want, step-by-step -step guides where you can look up on the screen and see it, or you can absolutely just ask the assistant to repeat it to you because it, again, has that same functionality. However, for me, I have Google Home Maxes in my kitchen. Well, one, not Maxes or Maxi or whatever the plural version of that would be. I have a Google Home Max in my kitchen, and that's more than enough for me. I'm not necessarily the biggest baker, although I do make a dynamite chocolate chip cookie, I'm not necessarily one to replace a Google Home Max with a smart display like this. I mentioned the price before, it was 250 bucks for the 10 inch model, $200 for the eight inch model. Now, depending on how big your kitchen is, the eight inch model might be more than enough to help you have that. But if you already have a Google Home in it, whether that's a mini or just a regular OG, this would be a tough price to swallow just to replace it for the potential to use the display sometimes, but not all the time. So at the end of the day, it's not worth for me to go out and buy a smart display when for you know 100 bucks or 150 bucks or you know 75 bucks whatever the going rate is for a Google Home Mini which I think is 50 bucks or a regular Google Home which is 125 it's not worth replacing all the ones in my house just for the ability to have a display that I may or may not use you know a handful of times when I'm walking around the kitchen now if you don't have one and you have that 200 or 250 bucks hands down no brainer the return on the investment is definitely there but if you already have a smart home that has some Google Home Maxes in it, or regular Google Homes or a Google Home Mini, it's probably not worth the upgrade. So that's it, that's all I have. As always, like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment below, join us on our live shows Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time or Eastern Standard Time, depending on the year, and we will see you next time.